In this third video in my Rye Breads of Europe series, I'm veering a little bit away from the dark and hearty ryes and showing you something lighter, sweeter, and spiced. Today I'm making Swedish Zirapslimpa, or Swedish syrup bread. If you're from the Midwest of the United States, you might know this bread as Swedish Limpa bread. But as many recipes that originally came from Europe, the American version is often a little bit different than its European counterpart. So join me today and I'll show you how to make the original Swedish syrup bread and share with you the differences and ingredients from the American one along the way. Let's get started. First, we're going to start by putting 250 milliliters or one cup of whole milk into a small saucepan with 75 grams or two and a half ounces of Swedish light syrup. This is a syrup made from sugar beets and it's similar to English golden syrup. So that's actually what I'm using here. This recipe is also sometimes made with Swedish dark syrup, which is similar to English treacle. And I think that's where the American substitution molasses came from. The American version uses molasses as well as brown sugar. Then you're also going to add 25 grams or about two tablespoons of unsalted butter and melt that all gently and then pour it into a bowl to cool. Bring the temperature down to about body temperature before moving on to the next step. Now you're going to pour the cooled mixture into a stand mixer and stir in 10 grams or three and a quarter teaspoon of active dry yeast and then let that bloom for five minutes. After five minutes, add in 225 grams or one and two thirds of a cup of bread flour plus 175 grams and one and a quarter cup of Swedish rye sift. This is a flour blend and sweeten that you can make by mixing 105 grams of bread flour with 70 grams of rye flour. Then you're going to add in one and a half teaspoons each of fennel seeds, anise seeds, and caraway seeds crushed. Don't grind them into a powder or the flavor will be quite overpowering. Then you're going to knead that for about 10 minutes until your dough is smooth and elastic. It should pass the window pane test, which is where you stretch a small piece of dough and if you can see through it and it doesn't rip, your gluten has properly developed. In the American version of this bread, you usually only add anise seed and orange zest, which is not added to the Swedish version. My guess as to where the orange zest may have come from in the American version is perhaps the Swedish Pomeranz loaf which is actually this same syrup bread made without spices and instead dried bitter orange peel is added. It's almost like the American version combined those two Swedish loaves to make a new kind. You're going to let your dough rise until doubled, which may take one and a half to two hours. Once doubled, punch down the dough and then roll it out onto your work surface and form it into a loaf by rolling it out to about the width of 10 to 11 inches or so, and then fold in the sides and roll it into a spiral, pulling the dough towards the middle of the loaf as you roll so it's not bigger on the ends. Then scoot your loaf on your surface with your hands to create tension. This will create a better structure in the bread. Pinch any spots on the bottom of the bread that may have not come together when pulling the loaf to create tension, and then place it on your parchment lined baking tray, cover it and let it rise until doubled. Once doubled, I added slashes on the top and then later learned that the traditional look of this loaf is actually without slashes. So if you want to be truly authentic, don't slash the top with a knife. Now bake at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 35 minutes until the surface is quite dark. If you want to test it, the internal temperature should be 96 to 99 Celsius or 205 to 210 Fahrenheit. While the bread is still hot, brush on a couple tablespoons of golden syrup and then let the bread cool and the surface of the bread completely dry before slicing into it. 
To enjoy this like the Swedish do, eat it with a slice of hard cheese and a glass of cold milk. This bread had such an amazing smell when it was baking. I'm so intrigued to try it. I have a little piece here, so I'm gonna give it a try. I'm going to be honest. I was fully expecting to dislike this bread because I'm not a really big fan of caraway. However, I really like this. The spices are a subtle background flavor that doesn't really have an overpowering caraway taste. The texture is soft and light, but not as light as a white bread. The rye flour gives it a little bit more texture and body to it, but you can't really taste the rye flour. The golden syrup adds a little bit of sweetness to it, but not in a dessert sort of way, just enough to be a pleasant background taste. I really enjoyed this bread and I'm definitely going to be making it again. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something, hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. I make recipes every week from a different European country and explore the history and traditions associated with each recipe. If you'd like to see the other breads in my Rye Breads of Europe series, check out this playlist here. And if you want something totally different, check out this video here. And I'll see you next time.